Hello everyone in the Philippines. I'm so excited to be speaking to you guys today. Everyone at Campus Revolution at this conference, we are one. I just want to say a big hello to my friend Grace Bayano. Thank you for allowing her to come to Bogota for like two years. She was a great blessing to us to have her in the worship team and just have her as a friend. It's it's It was amazing. Thank you, pastors. Also, Bishop Oriel, Pastor Geraldine, you guys are amazing. And I'm so grateful to hear and see everything that you guys are doing in the Philippines. We really look up to you guys. And also, I have some news for you guys. It is that we moved to Orlando, Florida about two weeks ago. The Lord has been speaking to us for about a year about missions and about like planting a church. We wanted to get out of our comfort zone. So we have been speaking to our pastors, asking for words, fasting and all that. And it's a great blessing to have their blessing to come here and start this new journey. We are going to be launching our church in February 2021, where we have these six months of just preparing everything in the spiritual warfare with prayer, intercession, and preparing ourselves for when we launch the church. So please be praying for us. And today I want to speak to you guys about Stronger Together. It's it's a message that was pre-recorded a couple of weeks ago at our Miami church. But I know it's going to be a great blessing to you. So please stay tuned. And I hope that it will bless you. All right. God bless you. And today I want to speak about Stronger Together stronger together this is the panama canal it's one of the seven wonders of the earth and it is a, a project that started in 1881 under the french government they saw that this was a great need because ships had to travel almost two months you know under south america to be able to get to the from the atlantic ocean to the pacific ocean so it took them a long time and this was a very needed project. But due to bad leadership, corruption, there was an epidemic, they were never able to complete it. So in 1904, President Theodore Roosevelt and the United States, the United States takes the leadership of this project. He makes sure to put the right leader in charge. He makes sure that they have alignment and vision and everyone is walking together towards that same goal and they were able to complete it only 10 years later. I was actually able to go and see this project that is amazing, the engineering and everything. And it was due to unity. Say with me, unity. So, and this is the Tower of Babel. is a story that is well known by all of us or most of us. And so what, what happened there? The earth was being populated People were started to get smarter and study engineering and construction. And they had a bright idea. They said, like, why don't we build a tower, a tower that would reach the sky? That sounds great, right? And but what, what was the problem? That their hearts were not right. They didn't want to do this to glorify God. They wanted to do this to glorify themselves. So this is what the Bible says in Genesis 11, 12. It says, look, he said, the people are united and they all speak the same language. After this, nothing they set out to do, to do will be impossible for them. So repeat after me. Nothing they set out to do will be impossible for them. This is what unity does. It makes the impossible become possible. And now we can see that this is a negative story with a positive principle, a negative story with a positive principle. Let's look at these horses. These are the Belgian horses. I don't know if you've seen them, but they're beautiful and they're very strong. So one Belgian horse on its own, he can pull up to 8,000 pounds. That's a lot, right? So if you put him with another Belgian horse that he has never 
met before. They just put them together. One's from Florida, the other one's from Texas. They can pull up to 22,000 pounds. That's the power of synergy. But if you put him together with a horse that he, had, he has trained with, that perhaps he even grew up with, they can pull up to 32,000 pounds. That's four times more than what just one horse can do. That's a lot, right? And this is the power of unity. And this is what Maddie Stepanek says. He says, unity is strength. When there is teamwork and collaboration, wonderful things can be achieved. And I, I love that word, collaboration, because collaboration means that you actually need to listen to your teammate, listen to other people so that you guys can come together and see a great result. Now, Jesus also teaches us about unity. And he says this in his prayer. He says, I am praying not only for these disciples, but also for all who will ever believe in me through their message. So he's praying not only for his immediate disciples, but for everyone who is going to come. That means us. And he says, I pray that they will all be one. Say with me, one. Just as you and I are one, as you are in me, Father. I am in you, and may they be in us so that they, the world will believe you sent me. This is amazing because this was Jesus' prayer before he went to be crucified. So check this out. He didn't pray for prosperity. He didn't even pray for protection. He didn't even pray for the power of the Holy Spirit to be upon us. He prayed for unity. That's how much Jesus wanted the body of Christ to be united because he believes that there is power in unity and that the enemy is always going to want to bring us apart and bring the body of Christ apart. Because when we are united, this is what, what Jesus said, that the unbelievers will believe. When we are united with other Christians, when, when we understand that it's not a competition and we're not competing against each other, but that we're actually all part of the same team, then the unbelievers will believe, and this is amazing. Now, I want to ask you something. Are you united with the right type of people? Are you united with the right type of people? Because a lot of times we say, yeah, let's work together. Let's work, you know, in church. But who are you spending your time with? Who are your friends? Who are you telling your vision, your dreams to? Is it people of God or is it people that are from the world? Just think about this. What are, and now I want to speak to you about what are some of the enemies of unity. One of them is lack of clarity. And this is something that for us Latinos or Latin people, we tend to be a little bit unclear about things and we tend to be a little bit like just go with the flow, you know, type of people. And a lot of times this can create like uncertainty or you don't know what's going on, right? And it, it, it happens in a lot of the areas of our lives. So like for instance, in, in our marriage, when everything that happened with the pandemic, you know, our kids used to go to school but all of a sudden we became homeschool parents, right? That, that was not part of my dream book. I didn't want to be a homeschool mom, but then I had to be. Now I, now I really enjoy it. But everything changed and I was still finishing school. I was still working. So a lot of things were like, whoa. So what happened? Like they weren't clear like schedules with us and we were both taking care of of the kids. So one time, you know, our kids were playing in the garden right there and we were both taking care of our kids at the same time. So how, how many of you know that when that happens, that means that no one is taking care of the kids. So we just left them there playing while we were in our computer working or doing something else. And, you know, they were very quiet and we checked on them. 
And what had happened, they had taken out these like black paint that was in our garage and they just started creating a work of art right there on the pavers. And we were like, oh my gosh, you know, like what a mess. You know, we had to correct them. Then we had to call for help to help clean this up. So it was more work, more expensive, more things. I was like, okay, we got to change some things around because this clearly is not working. And since then, we just started making shifts like, okay, this, this is my schedule with the kids. This is your schedule with the kids. And when Julian's with the kids, then I, I can be studying or working. And I have about like four hours a day for me, for my things. And then he has like four hours a day for, for his things. And it's brought a lot of clarity among us and the world could be falling apart when he's with the kids or with me. But we know that there's clarity and we know that one person is responsible to be with the kids. And this brought actually this clarity, it brought us together more because when things are unclear, then it can separate us and it can create confusion, right? Another enemy is poor communication or communication that you're not also communicating daily. This could be with your spouse. This could be with your kids. This is so key to be communicating constantly about where you stand, about your values. And the way you act is the way you have your values in your heart. Some of the values that we have for ourselves is Jesus is first. My priorities are always in order. So we make sure we keep telling people and we show them with our example that Jesus is first, that we put him first, that we are constantly in our devotional, seeking him in our prayer, seeking him when we are in our worship service as well. So we're constantly communicating the same things, repeating, repeating. I am a leader is not something I do. It's who I am. I honor others to honor God. So we're constantly repeating these values and it communicates clearly. And, a, and another one is only looking for a personal benefit. That's another enemy of unity. When, you don't, we're not, you're, when you're not looking out for people's benefits, but just your own, that can also take people like, wow, I thought you cared about me. Or, but just think about this because a lot of times we're not intentional about helping others and people can see it as something negative. So this image right here is a Lego, right? Everyone knows the Lego. And a lot of people are just like that Lego, that they're working on their own thing, that they're working on their own ministry or on their own dream and not telling everyone. And, and we are a body. We are a body. We need to work together. This is what First Peter 2.5 says, you yourselves are like living stones and are being built up as a spiritual house. We are the house. And what you add to this house is very important. And when we are all like those Legos that we start just coming in, bringing our gifts, bringing our offerings, bringing our prayers, then we start building the church and then we can become the church and this is what god sees in you right now that we don't have a church right now that we don't have perhaps a physical building but god says you are the church you are the church and when we are all together in unity with what the pastor has told us with that vision that he has for the city then you guys can become one church this is the time to see the harvest. This is the time to see unity. This is the time where people who had like other visions, other dreams are going to come aligned with the pastors and they're going to start seeing that it's a church that lives in unity. That is a church where all the members are acting as one, have the correct attitude to see revival in the city. So just think about that. Am I just working on my own, on my own thing, and I'm not really aligned with my pastor? Or am I working 
to see what God has put in my pastor's house. And I'm just going to come beside him. Just think about that today. And I know that as you do that, you're going to start seeing this alignment and this unity. And that is my prayer for you because that's what the that's what Jesus sees you like. He sees you as that living stone. And, and you have to see yourself as that as well. And just say with me, we are the church. Say, we are the church. I am the church. The church is not a building. You are the church. You are the one who has been called by God. And you know, I, I just love the book of Acts. That's like my favorite book ever because it tells us about the birth of the church. And the church was not born in a building. The church was birthed out of a house in the upper room as they were seeking God, as they were saying, God, you promised us. We are here today just seeking you with all of our hearts. Please come and please fulfill that word that you told us. And then the power of God came Pentecost happened and boom, then the church started to just roll and they started preaching the word. You know, Peter's first sermon, more than 3,000 people believed and it started like that in a house. And this is the same thing that is happening right now. And it's like God is taking us back to the start, to the beginning where he's saying, you are the church, where he's saying your house is the church. And that is what's happening right now. So you have to see your house as the church. Don't see the building as a church. See that your house is that church that God wants to use. So just come together with your family. Just have some worship. Just say, God, we're here to receive. We're not going to let this pandemic or this thing to take us away from what you have for us. And today we just want to make church. We just want to make this. And as the church was growing and as the church was progressing, look what this says in Acts 2, 44 and 45. It says, and all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. And I feel that's what unity does. Unity makes you generous. Unity and the church say, hey, how can I help my brothers? How can I help my sisters? How can I help the community? And they were all together and they shared everything this has. And, and it's something that God has really spoken to me lately because, you know, to tell you the truth, us Latinos, sometimes we're not that generous. And sometimes we tend to be a little bit like, hey, is this guy want something from me? Or, you know, suspicious of people. But I've had to fight against that and I'm, I'm always saying, okay, I'm going to expect the best from people and I'm just going to be generous whether they deserve it or not because that's what Jesus did for us. We didn't really deserve His grace. We didn't deserve His mercy, but He just gave it to us. And they shared everything. And as you share with people, that is how you actually spread the gospel. That's something that God spoke to me. is that More than words is deeds. More than words, that's what God is looking for. Like, hey, I'm going to do this for this guy. I'm going to give him a call. I'm going to check on him. I'm going to just text him or see how he's doing and say, hey, I'm here for you. This is what you need to start doing with your friends, with your family members. And you know what's cool about all these things that is happening is that we're actually becoming a global church because you can have in your life group people from different states or even different nations and you can spread the good news and you can tell them, hey, God loves you. Hey, I'm here for you. Hey, I'm going to pray for you. And I know that during this pandemic, God will not leave you alone. And this is the word of God for you. And those people are going to be so grateful. And I'm sure, you know, I, I, I feel like you have family members in other states that you're like, they're away from God. And God is putting that burden in your heart right now to perhaps give them a call or start a, 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 a small a small group, a live group with them and just say, hey, I want to meet with you every week, like 20 minutes. And I just want to pray for you. And I just want to hear you out. And I just want to tell you that I'm going to be there for you. And as you start doing this, you're going to start adding that love of God 
to those people and they're gonna be so grateful with you so sometimes we thought ah oh, people have to come to our house and we have to but a lot of times we just gotta be like oh okay now i can actually expand my vision and now i can actually touch more people and this is something great that god wants to do with you today and he just wants to use you right there as he used the book of acts so say one more time i am the church thank you lord for calling me thank you because this is the time we're gonna be generous and just lift up your hands right there where you are and i'm gonna bless you and i'm gonna pray for you and i'm gonna say god we are the church and we are stronger together we want to be united with our pastor we want to be united with this church because we know that you you chose us for something great and just as jesus prayed for unity just as he said father i pray for them and also for the ones who are going to believe after them we pray for those who are going to believe with our message father please help us to be one to act as one we don't want to just work on our own little thing we want to work with our church we want to embrace our church members we want to embrace the body of christ father because we know that we're adding souls to your kingdom we're adding souls lord and we're growing and we declare that we are stronger together just start declaring just start prophesying that there's unity in this church that maybe if you've had an argument with someone in your team, with someone in church, say, God, I want to speak to that person. I want to ask for forgiveness and I want us to work together. I want us to heal our hearts because we know that we are stronger together and just bless your pastors and just bless this church and just say, God, during this pandemic, we're going to see that we're going to expand even to places that we never thought we would because this is what you're doing and you are using us and you are using our gifts and you are using our talents and you are using our words to bring healing to those people who are brokenhearted because this is what you have sent us to do and we believe it and we thank you just thank god right there where you are to start clapping right there where you are and the power of God is going to come upon you and you're going to see that spirit of generosity come over you. Say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, guys. God bless you.